University of Maryland Global Campus has more than 20 years experience providing affordable online education to military service members and working adults. Offering low tuition, no-cost digital resources replacing most textbooks, scholarships for those who qualify, and more. Learn more at umgc.edu slash podcast. Holidays are here, and so is fashionable fitness. Gift yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G, a phone that folds in half to literally stand on its own. Pair it with the Galaxy Watch 4 for ultimate wellness and wow factor. Check health stats, flex personal records. Over 90 activities can be tracked, like biking, swimming, golfing, and more. Invest in yourself with tech made to crush goals. Holidays open up with Galaxy. Shop it all at Samsung.com. 5G connection and availability may vary. Check with Carrier. Products sold separately. Hey everyone, this is the Almost World Podcast. Bringing to you mind blowing interviews with guests from all over the world. So settle down, relax, and enjoy the show. Oh yeah, by the way, if you like the podcast, please support Elmo's World Podcast on Patreon. Your support is what helps the podcast improve more and more. And we have again for his uh, second episode on my podcast, Ratian Sadman. And again, he is from Bangladesh and he holds nihilism. And Ratian, I want to start by saying... Do you think we as human beings can create our own meaning, can give meaning to our own lives, excluding any God that could exist or would exist? You see, uh, when you ask that question, I have to ask the definition of meaning. What do you mean by meaning? Well, um, for example, uh, uh, the, when I uh, look at my child, uh, I feel love for my child, and so I find meaning in my love for that my child. Therefore, if I find meaning there, that is my motivation to live. I I find that uh, something as a non tangible uh, reason for me to continue living, living even if there is no outright divine meaning or purpose to my own existence. Okay, then uh, let me ask you another question. If you know the fact that the very reason you love your offsprings is that you would find meaning in it and you will continue to live and protect them so they will be able to have their own offsprings and pass on your genes. Will your sense of meaning fade when you know the fact that evolution designed us in this way so uh, it can go on. So the evolutionary process could go on. And will the meaning fade even more when you know, learn the fact that evolution itself doesn't have no purpose. It's just a process that goes on randomly by chance. Will your meaning fade then? Well, no, because um, me as an individual, I take uh, my experience right now, which is what is happening is who I am today and that I feel love. I, I grew up in a community that taught me what is right and wrong. And no matter how much I understand how everything works, that does not remove the fact that I love my child, I love my family, and I, lo- I, I will serve humanity to my utmost abilities. Hmm. Yes, that's the case. It's interesting to see that a meaning can exist, but in a certain scale. If you uh, keep it uh, in daily or in a lifetime or in a certain period, in a human period of time that is comprehensible to a human, relatable to a human, then meaning somewhat subjective relative meaning can exist. But when you are um, zooming out, I mean scaling back to the, in the scale of the universe, in the scale of billions of years, in the scale of reality, then no meaning can exist. It's impossible. And even if you start zooming in, in the subatomic level, in the particles, in there, logic breaks down again and meaning cannot exist anymore. 
So in this sweet spot in Goldilocks zone, in this uh, somewhat Goldilocks zone, you can make up your own meaning in a sense, I think. Let me tell you a story that I am about, I am learning Java. I'm not, I'm not a very attentive student. I'm never, I have never been the one to follow rules or something like that, but I have been somewhat successful in the, uh, in the SAT equivalents of equivalent of Bangladesh and got into a uh, somewhat prestigious computer science in department, but I have never tried or wanted to achieve any of this. This just happened as a byproduct of the things I do for fun. So for the first time, I was like, I'm sitting ducks in uh, the quarantine and can I cannot go out. So I always wanted to make stuff. I mean, art, games, apps, something to like, um, I mean, something that can be considered art. So I thought of, I want to make a game, which is a love letter to Frederick as a Java project for my curriculum. So I learned Java in 20, 25 days. And I made a video game in eight days, a puzzle game in three days. And I, I'm, I'm going to tell you that I swear to, if there is a God, <laughs> that those seven to eight days i worked my ass off slept only five to six hours a day and worked the rest of it on my game and it was one of the best time in my life okay. and i derived meaning from the fact that i was creating something that was un unique to me it is something only i could have thought of the video game but if, if the, I mean, and I made it uh, at last. And now some of the people I really care about, whose, whose opinions I really care about, are giving their opinions on it. They love it. They are saying that, oh, what the hell, you, the metaphors, the Friedrich Nietzsche metaphors. I, I literally turned Friedrich Nietzsche quotes into game levels. I'm really proud, proud of that. And, and I'm, I'm going to say that. When you say that you're going to talk about existentialism today, I mean, if we can derive meaning from the things we do, how we live our life. And I'm going to say that, yes, we, I think we can. And I think that it is the, it is in the core to be a human, to find out what is it that gives you meaning. Yeah, but so are you a nihilist then or a newly converted existentialist by w what you just said, said, told me? No, no. I mean, I, I'm saying that nihilism is a fact. Nothing really matters. It cannot matter. But to you, now, in this moment, you can... Uh, you can... It can matter to you. But in the grand scheme of things, in a larger scale, in the scale of uh, the universe or the scale of science, and nothing can matter. Um, well, I don't think that existentialism and nihilism has to be mutually exclusive. When you are talking about nihilism, you are saying that there cannot be anything objectively truth. We cannot learn uh, the uh, truths of the universe. Nothing can not. Nothing can last forever. And uh, nobody belongs anywhere. Nobody exists on purpose. Everybody is going to die. Those are true in existentialism too. But in existentialism, it says that yes, nothing really matters. But for a certain period of time, it can matter too exclusively. But nothing really matters. Okay, then uh, for example. If I were to um, understand the deep and hard nihilism of things, and I know that, for example, my love for my child is simply out of an evolutionarily attained characteristic, would it be logical yes. for me to, to actually act on anything because I, now I know that it is simply an, some sort of illusion by which uh, natural selection has embedded on uh, on me to uh, prov give provide care for my child and to feel 
uh, happy when she, uh, his his or her well being is good, right? So my question is, would it be illogical not to care about it then? Well, for the 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 fact is that, um, there there is no logic, right? There is nothing that matters. So. Uh, wh- the 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 real question is why continue to act at all why do something because that thing matters even if it matters to you in a in a in a human scale way why why would you act at all why would i act at all uh, in a simple way i would answer that life is full of possibilities death is extremely final When you are dead, you are dead. But when you are alive, you can do stuff. Though they don't, they wouldn't matter. But you can do it. You can experience stuff, and life is full of possibilities. One day this happened, another day that happened. One day you are a nihilist. The next day you will fall in love. The third day you get a breakup and turn back to a doomer. And shit, shit keeps happening. that's why i choose life instead of death on my good days and if life continues to get bad and bad and you don't see that why it should go on i then i believe that um voluntary suicide is a uh, acceptable thing in the words of seneca if you if you feel stuck if you cannot see the road ahead you only have to turn over your wrists and i firmly believe in that but now i would say that life is full of possibilities and death is very final when you're dead you're dead but when you're alive and spectrum of shit can happen yeah but again for example as you say because life is full of possibilities compared to any act any the 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 stapleness of of stagnantness of being dead um when you get to the uh overall scheme grand scheme of things you would understand that there is no difference from you being a dead body to you being an alive body because there is no there is no ghost that lurks there it's simply a product of of natural causes right there is no meaning yes. or there is no uh actual reason to to be and to be alive right there is a- yes and there is no actual reason to kill yourself either nihilism is not all misery and uh, misery and darkness it's it's nothing nihilism is literally nothing nihilism is the stock photo of the universe the filter you are putting on a, on your world view or image is you are uh, they are your emotions nihilism negates them too in nihilism it's the stock photo of the universe it doesn't have to be misery or anything it doesn't have a filter it is the stock photo the filter you are putting on nihilism is a act of yours not nihilism so you're saying that um because the universe is a blank canvas i can paint anything i want that's is that's basically it, basically what you're saying there is there are no rules so even even if if it, even if i don't kill myself uh, it doesn't matter right? i don't think that i'm saying that the universe is a black canvas and you can you can do whatever you want that is true but whatever you will be doing is predetermined so actually what you are thinking that you are doing is actually predetermined by nature and nurture your genes and the uh, um, cause and effect uh, net of cause and effect chain you are actually bound to do them <laughs> so the i'm not going to say that the universe is a black canvas and blank canvas and you can do whatever you want you can but you can experience doing them you will be an entity until you are di- until you are dead you will remain an entity that is experiencing the experiencing the universe you are a part of the universe that is experiencing itself okay. and taking your um, 
train of thought that um, a dead body and a live body has the same number of atoms in it, particles in it. And I'm going to say that, yes, it's true, but then isn't it, uh, can it not be considered a miracle that when those particles, when, uh, when the dead body wasn't dead, when it was alive, those particles were alive. Somehow in this universe, how everything seemed to be barren and and uh, in this small blue dot of a planet, a entity came alive, a mud of carbons, carbon, some carbon particles came alive for a certain period of time, experienced the universe, and then went back to the inevitable. Yeah, okay. So I, I get your point that um this is, is basically what you're saying is this is a great opportunity because it's super rare for uh, me to exist in this uh, sort of uh experience right that i that this psychological phenomena by which i can come I, I have an ego and that i can contrast it to the universe and interact with the universe in in within an illusionary illusionary way by which i would th- believe that i have a i can cause or i have free will but i simply am d- predetermined all my actions but that i am simply uh, a spectator yet uh, a spectator on my own life but the f- the having uh, the illusion that i am on the driver's wheel right it's it's very complicated how I said it, but yes, yeah, uh, uh, yeah yes, that's like that's basically existentialism, and I don't think that uh, somehow contradicts nihilism either. You are accepting nihilism and saying that yeah, nihilism, nothing matters and shit. But uh, let's just see. I mean, if nothing matters, then why not? Okay, okay, but then, uh, for example. If I, if the universe is uh, simply something that came about, and then uh, I would uh, definitely adhere to my own experiences as the standard for what is good or bad for me. For example, if I enjoy something, then that would be something good on on a, on a standard. And what if I if th- therefore. He, he, uh, my well-being and my happiness and my joy is what I would deem as uh, the the scale by which I would judge my actions, right? And therefore, um, the the most logical way for me to enjoy this opportunity by which I, I have attained is simply that I would do... I would not care about social society. I would not care about others. I would simply uh, do everything I can to be happy, yeah. right? Even if it's criminal in uh, in how others view me, I wouldn't care because I they would simply be acting upon a predetermined disposition. And uh, so uh, even me simply raping women would be a predetermined disposition i would it would seem that i am driving the wheel but i am simply a spectator so um it's not that my i i i have no control of my actions but that because i have no control of my actions i can do anything i want do you know what do you know what I, do you know what i mean uh See, I'm about to say some really dark stuff and people, if someone is listening to me, they'll start immediately hitting me. But the truth is all this sense of fairness, goodness and justice, these are all made up ramblings. They are not objective and everything is permissible. So if you think that the best of life, the, the way you will get out the best of life, best out of life is by raping someone, then who I, who am I to stop you? If you get caught after raping her, then who are you to stop them or say that you can, they cannot kill you? When you, I mean, 
just because nothing matters yes nothing matters but uh, when you are living with a certain amount of people you have signed an invisible contract with them when you're living in the herd you have signed an invisible contract with them with the state with the herd to abide by some of their rules and if you you are free to not abide them you are free to not abide them but then they will take actions against you and if you are stronger than stronger than them and if they cannot take actions against you then go on you feel free to do whatever you want yeah uh, but uh, i i i completely understand and i completely agree if if that is how existentialism works right and uh, that's why uh, a lot of no no i don't think this one's existentialism i think mm-hmm. this is nihilism mm-hmm. moral nihilism right yeah so um uh, coming from uh, me if someone i i completely uh disagree with nihilism not that i don't uh, i don't i'm i'm sure that it's i have a certainty that it's wrong or that it's bad but out of the social constructs by which i grew up in i would deem it as something e- evil and that i would uh i would wish to live in a society where people would subscribe to more on a sub- on objective morality and have an objective meaning in their life rather than simply individuals who 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 li- live in a society peacefully because it's it's the law right it is it, because it, they, we sign a social contract and so it, it that's 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 not coming from a logical uh sense but it's coming from a a a, a, de- a the subjective morality by which i was born in you know that's how i would wish society to be formed but then again because of modern ideologies humanity has re- reached this point where they understand universe the universe more than than we used to and and actually that's how a lot of people live nowadays exactly how you described it that if they wish to do this there would no be uh, an objective nothing be objective that would stop them from doing it and only that they would only the government would stop them from doing it and that that's that's that's, that's why i i i tend to stray or uh lean away from nihilism uh, in in an in the irrationality of my own subjectivity that's it well you see that uh, things are not that simple when uh, let's uh, think of a thought experiment if everyone in the world turned into a nihilist tomorrow yes there will be an initial chaos somewhat but very quickly the world will settle down i mean society will settle down into an equilibrium there will be people like you and there will be those outcasts the outskirts the outliers who want to do whatever they want and there will be the government who will try to keep them from doing whatever they want and there will be a balance and that balance would be natural you won't have to force it and it would happen because at the very uh, at the um, very beginning there was chaos and people uh, um, turned into small groups then uh, hunter gatherers then started agriculture then bought, built cities it, it became naturally and there was no god to intervene and it will happen again by nihilism if someone turns into a complete nihilist and turns into a hedonist as a result that only he he wants uh, the uh, pleasure of the flesh and stuff like that then he would in your sense he would act animalistically prim- primitively primordial uh, will he will succumb to his primordial instincts and that really sounds like uh, the days back in when we were used to be hunter and gatherers and even then when we were used to be hunter and gatherers people decided to band together and create society and civility and uh, and it happened naturally 
even back then object uh, morality or objective morality didn't exist this little small band maybe believed in the same thing but that small band didn't and even the formation before the formation of language there couldn't have been any morality or these fancy ideas or religion or something as complex as them but a sense of hard morality may have not may have it obviously existed a sense of society obviously existed and that's the reason we came all this way if it it had not existed we would have uh, got extinct back then so if everyone turns into an alice tomorrow uh, it won't be as big of a problem as you think i i i actually com- completely agree yeah. and then we actually in, in some way we can actually see that already happening right now with the uh, secularism uh actually being a a rule in most governments nowadays in democratic societies and uh yeah so um but then me personally i would uh still find that um having a divine meaning would be more more of a narrative but there isn't one there isn't one every last one of us would want to hear some word from god some objective truth every last one of us even the most darkest hardcore nihilist of us would love some sweet sweet divine truth but there isn't one we must grow up and face the truth that there isn't one there can't be any objective meaning or objective morality or objective truth and uh, this just how it is and that's how and that's the only way you can get the most out of life and on the other way if you reject this truth that there isn't objective truth what is what is there to do become a terrorist muslim terrorist for 72 virgins after death that is what happening on the other side okay uh i actually uh, i completely agree but um well we we wouldn't know actually because uh for me i think that humanity doesn't work logically and no, no matter how much they understand that the nihilistic views of life they would still cling to their the irrational side of them which uh they have uh, attained uh evolutionarily and in in, in history and I guess that we would it wouldn't change much of what's happening right now. Right. Yeah. And and I guess that the the materialism uh we can actually see that in some countries right now for example in China where the the main goal of every most of the individuals there is simply mat- uh, to be more wealthy, you know, and and to in- enjoy life to the fullest. because they have no uh religion or some sort and and when it uh, i think that um there is there is still some justification f- when it comes to other religions right for example islam or christianity uh, they may be they may be um they have may have some flaws if you if you if you're an outsider but i think that uh if coming from someone who came from the christian perspective i think that we cannot just leave christianity behind or or throw it out the window because it's been with us for i know yeah for 2000 for almost 2000 years and and uh yeah oh. and, um and so uh we cannot just and i think that we we still have something to learn about what christianity teaches us for example the the narrative that it that res, that it gives to people that resonates to billions 
For example, the story of redemption and the in the in the in the in the and in an ant rational universe trying to rescue or to to reunite the order within the within the 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 within humanity itself it shows that we as humans actually uh deep internally have faculties where or archetypes where we 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 can accept that we have a potential we have a potential to become something that is advanced enough to arise from from needing any meaning at all you know and yeah i i read uh neat Friedrich nietzsche a lot and and i know that it, it's bad to just study one philosopher but uh so far i i think that we still ha have much to learn from from him you know yeah he's he's one of my favorite historical figures actually i don't i don't agree with everything he has he has to say but some of them are like transcendental i mean revolutionary from amor fati to will to power the and to how he deconstructed morality i mean what the hell but he was he wasn't a nihilist though he wasn't a nihilist he believed in meaning he thought that someone could have uh, achieved meaning by being a ubermensch or some shit that was some alpha male animalistic uh, biological bullshit though i don't agree with everything he has to say but i mean wow the power of a human brain i consider him on par with um uh, einstein and newton and i mean and uh yeah those yeah, people yeah the fa the fact Darwin. that uh, psychology psychology itself is uh somewhat mainly based on how Friedrich Nietzsche viewed the human uh, existence, you know, and that's why Freud uh, took a lot and learned a lot from from him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I want to ask you another question. Um, so because now that you find meaning in your life and uh, society. It, at it, at its best is the, is one of the biggest governing uh, factors of of how you behave uh how would you go about it for example if a law which is which doesn't harm anyone is there but it hinders you from achieving something uh that is good for you uh, would you break it even if it because just because it's 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 a law and you know that it's meaningless i think that when one is thinking about these situations there is always a um consequence and reward risk and reward factor in that i mean even the most insane criminal must think of the risk and reward factor for even a second and a sane person would obviously think about it so i think the i mean society will always have its problems and i believe firmly believe that uh, in my view governments and societies should be designed to serve the individual the state is for the individual the individual is not for the state i mean in uh, in which society the individual can flourish the most is the best society i mean in a society when shakespeare can write his poems when newton can do his research when friedrich nietzsche can think alone in france and uh when Di diogenes can do whatever he want in the street is the perfect um what i am perfect society yeah, but, um, so, in my mind uh, is it the government who provides the or who pursues the happiness of every individual or is it that the collective uh the collect the every citizen 
provides uh, a assistance to those who need it. Is it uh, how is, does that work? Uh, I think that the government should uh, follow the structure of evolution. I mean, everyone let things be free, uh, let things be free and uh, let, I mean, evolution take its course. Don't uh, obstruct nature. Yeah, but the, 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 the sad part about that is that... Um... Well, we this we will have to dive into politi econ econ economics here because um, in capitalism, I think that's that's that really that reflects evolution deeply, you know. And for example, uh, mm. the the fact that one percent of the of the one percent of the citizens in the U.S. contain fifty percent of the total money means that um, it follows this that where the those who are dominant or superior in in, in for example producing or or ownership uh, usually are the ones who are rewarded the most right and so what happens is if they if they are rewarded but the most then those who at the bottom who who are unskilled who are who have no technical uh, abilities of or give l low value to society will in fact suffer and not be able to do i think capitalism would fix itself i think universal basic income is coming and even the hardcore neoliberal capitalist countries like america won't be able to save themselves from it universal basic income is i think the only way to go fourth industrial revolution is coming with along with automation I think the idea of jobs will be uh, very less prevalent than it was or is. So un universal basic income is the only way to go. Yeah, but how do you think that will happen? Uh, you know about fourth industrial revolution, right? AI, automation. So they will wipe out the labor, labor jobs first. And then they will go after the clerks and the accountants. Even after that, some low level um, uh, jobs. The only thing that would remain are the human things. I mean, hospice nurse, the psycho psychiatrists, the psychologists, the thinkers, the creative, the artists, and the scientists. The, the grinding will be done by the uh, AIs and robots and the automat automatas. But you have to be, I mean, the specializing, yes, the specialization would continue. I mean, someone have to, there will need to be some human factor in making the, making the AIs and the automatas and the robots. But those jobs will decrease dramatically. So the only way to go is that if uh, the society gets jobless by time and people start losing job jobs and they start losing their source of income then how will the big corporation sell their products to whom will they sell them so it will come naturally that the western countries will adopt universal basic incomes income and after that the uh, rest of the world will follow them Capitalism, just like slavery and feudalism, has is going to end. I never thought that it will stay forever. It was uh, very idiotic to think that some social uh, constructed, uh, I mean, idea would remain forever. So it had its limits, and it is it had its time, and it's about to end in our lifetime. I think. Okay, yeah. So, um, uh, one last question, Rat Ratin, uh, because uh, it, it's been like f forty minutes. Yeah, uh, I want to ask you this question, and, and um, how how do you think 
one in, an individual should act knowing that uh, in, uh, there is no meaning and the only meaning you could give it is is right now you're experiencing it and you're not actually you're more you're an ex- a spectator just pretending to drive but you you but and so how would you as an individual work towards a a better world i'm not going to say anything about a better world i don't think that any there can be better worlds objectively a person who wants to make the world better is a very dangerous person i think he is very naive and very idealist and he doesn't get the full picture that's why he is getting all uh, i need to make the world a better place but in the terms of the individual i'd say that be aware i mean awareness is the only thing you have you are not actually free you are not you don't actually matter but you have this awareness you are aware for a certain period of time and to uh, to give an example i'd say that in dostoevsky dostoevsky joined the war in russia i think it was a civil war or something so they he got caught and they lined him up in a firing line to execute him so right before getting fired i mean right before getting executed he thought that if only if he could saw if he could see the droplets of water that get that get stuck in the side of a glass the uh, the dew drops flowers the wind even an ugly old lady if he if he could see them one more time one last time again before dying and just before he was about to die and get killed a person we came on came with a petition to release him so after that when he felt that epiphany felt that experience near that experience he was like what the hell everybody everything is so beautiful i am alive he 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 fell in love with being alive with awareness so from that on he was like oh this is so beautiful that that guy is crying uh, there is a war is going on but still something is going on a war is going on it's so eventful it's so beautiful everything is happen is everything that is happening in my mind outside my mind out of my control in my control uh, it's so wondrous and full of awe and the fact that we can we are aware of these things these events these emotions these processes it's it's it can be considered a miracle in a barren universe the key is just to be aware shit will happen there will be good days there will be bad days but being bored of life is criminal i'd say okay well uh, you said it brother and um thank you so much for being on the show and i hope that uh i could get you to debate someone who who would uh, who is is in utter disagreement with you I, i think it would be very fun <laughs> i i heard of jartley cools and jartley cools and navid's episode though i uh, it's i'm it's uh i i'm really being what i want to say i'm watering it down when i say that i disagree with them violently <laughs> <laughs> okay okay uh, thanks uh so that we are ending in one two and so that's the end of it thanks for tuning in guys this is your host elmo ador junior and thank you for listening in and please subscribe Please follow us on Facebook. Please please follow this. Please. Thanks.
It takes a lot of ingredients to fix or build a car, like cooking, but without the frozen dinner easy way out. eBay Motors has 122 million parts. It's always the right fitment, so you can follow any recipe to a T. Whether it's a vintage Italian coupe that's classic like grandma's meatballs or a German luxury car that's as complicated as Oma's Rouladen, to cook up something great in the garage, use the eBay Motors app or visit ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Holidays are here, and so is fashionable fitness. Gift yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G, a phone that folds in half to literally stand on its own. Pair it with the Galaxy Watch 4 for ultimate wellness and wow factor. Check health stats, flex personal records. Over 90 activities can be tracked, like biking, swimming, golfing, and more. Invest in yourself with tech made to crush goals. Holidays open up with Galaxy. Shop it all at Samsung.com. 5G connection and availability may vary. Check with carrier. Products sold separately.